Rahul, thank you very much. It's great to have you on the Frankly Speaking show today. Thank, thank you, you very much indeed. It's been 10 years in, as an MP for you. You fought your first election in 2004. And this is your first TV interview? Your first interview? Well, it's, it's not my first interview, but it's my first formal interview of this type, yeah. Why has it taken so long? Well, I've done a lot of media interactions prior. Um, I've done press conferences and I've spoken to the media. But mainly my focus, the bulk of my focus, um, has been in internal party work. And that's where I've uh, been concentrating. So that's, that's where most of my energy was going. Or is it that you've been reluctant to communicate more on a one-to-one -one basis? No, not at all. I've, I mean, I've had uh, many, many press conferences that you've seen, so I don't... It's I don't not that, that you've issue. wanted to avoid touching on difficult or tough issues. No, I mean, I like uh, difficult or tough issues. I like dealing with that. So now that this is your first detailed and long interview round in 10 years, we have a lot of ground to cover. Sure. So I have one request to you right at the start, that let's be as specific as possible on the subjects that we deal with today. Do I have your agreement on that? Yeah, I mean, we'll be, we'll be specific, but um, if, I, if I would like to sort of explain things in a bit, uh, in a broader fashion, I think uh, okay. that would be okay with okay. you guys. And if I want to draw you back into so specifics. You can draw me back as much as you want. Okay. So, Rahul Gandhi, the first point is this, that you've just avoided this whole question about whether you're open for the Prime Minister's post. Yeah. Uh, it seems to me, yeah. Rahul, that you're avoiding a difficult contest. See, um, if, you look, if you look at the speech I gave in the AICC just a few days back, the issue is basically how the Prime Minister in this country is chosen. Where the Prime Minister is chosen in this country is through the MPs. We, the, our system basically chooses MPs and then the MPs elect the Prime Minister. Uh, I said pretty clearly uh, in my speech um, uh, in AICC that if the Congress party so chooses and the Congress party wants me to do any, anything for them, I'm happy to do that. Uh, it's respect for the process. In fact, uh, announcing your Prime Minister prior to an election, announcing your Prime Minister without asking the members of Parliament uh, is not actually was written in the Constitution. You did that in 2009? No, we didn't. Of course you did. Uh, no. what, what we did in 2009 um, was that we had an incumbent Prime Minister. Uh, Prime Minister won the election. He then <coughs> went to Parliament. The members of Parliament decided that that Prime Minister was going to continue. And there was actually a process where he was asked. They were and you asked, named your prime ministerial candidate, Rahul. That's 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 it was, really, we that's had, really had a we had a we had an incumbent prime minister, uh, and uh, there was no question of our changing him. See, Rahul, we can go up and down on this question. Yeah. The fact of the matter is this: Who else will they choose? Oh, no, who else will Congress MPs choose but Rahul Gandhi? That's that's up to them, right? But what what one has to do, and I think this is this is central to what I keep saying is democracy is about respect of processes. Democracy is about non-arbitrary decisions. Democracy is about spreading decisions. It's not about destroying processes. There is a process in the Constitution. That process says, and it's clearly written in the Constitution, it says, members of parliament are to be elected by the population, and members of parliament are to elect the prime minister. All I'm doing is respecting that process. Are you avoiding a direct face-off with Narendra no, Modi? There is, is, there a, is there a fear of loss, Rahul? Because this election, frankly, is not looking very good for the Congress party from overall estimates. And the belief, the growing belief, is that if Rahul Gandhi has not picked up the challenge officially, that means there is a fear of loss. He's avoiding a direct one-on-one -on -one battle with Mr. Narendra Modi. Rahul, yeah. you must answer that now. To, to, to understand that question, uh, you have to understand a little bit, a little bit about what uh, Rahul Gandhi is and what Rahul Gandhi's circumstances have been. Uh, and if you if you delve into that, uh, you'll get an answer to the question of uh, what Rahul Gandhi is scared of and what he's not scared of. So if I mean, the real question, right, is what I'm doing sitting here. Uh, you're you're a journalist. Uh, when you were small, you must have thought to yourself. Um, I want to do something, right? You, you, you decided to become a journalist at some point. Why did you do that? 
You're asking me the yeah, question. Yeah, I'm asking you the question. This is a conversation. Because, yeah, because, you I, wanna, because, you, I, because I like because I like and enjoy being a journalist. And what, because what it is, is it? a professional challenge for me. My question to you is, Rahul, no, I'm gonna are, answer you, the are you avoiding a direct no, face-off with that? I'm, I'm going to answer the question, but I just want to ask you, when you, were, when you were young and you thought about being a journalist, what, was, what drove you? Once I decided to become a journalist, I cannot be half a journalist. Okay. Once you've decided okay. to get into politics, and you are leading your party effectively. You can't be leading okay. your party by half. So I throw the question, okay. so Rahul, I'll, with I'll, respect back I'll, at you. And my question to you is, Narendra Modi is challenging you on a daily basis. So he, I'll, I'll, he, I'll answer. He, you're not answering the question I asked you. But I'll answer, I'll answer the question uh, that will give you some insight into what, how Rahul Gandhi thinks. Okay? And for that, I'll have to expand a little bit about my growing up, how I grew up, the circumstances I grew up in. What I saw when I was a child was my father, who was a pilot, and because of circumstances, was thrown into the political system. And all I saw when I was small, after, after my grandmother died, was my father in constant, constant combat with the system uh, in India. And then, <clears throat> I saw him. Um, I saw him die. Actually, right. In my in my in my life, I've seen my grandmother die. I've seen my father die. I've seen my grandmother go to jail, and I've actually been through a tremendous amount of pain when, as a child, when these things happen to you. I mean, there's absolutely no there's. What I had to be scared of, I lost. There's absolutely nothing I'm scared of. Though there's, I have an aim. I have a clear aim in my mind. And the aim is that I do not like what I see in Indian politics. It's something that is inside my heart. It's like when, you know, in, in our mythology, when they, talk about, when they talk about Arjun, he only sees one thing. He doesn't see anything else. Uh, you ask me about Mr. Modi, you ask me about anything. I only see one thing. And the thing I see is that the system in this country needs to change. I don't see anything. I'm blind to everything else. Okay? I'm blind because I saw people I love being destroyed by this system. I'm blind because this system every day is unfair to our people. I asked you today, you come from Assam. Um, you know, and I'm sure that you also, in your work, feel the unfairness of this system. I'm, you're not going to answer my question, so we're not going to go there. But this system, every day, every day, every day, every day hurts people. Okay? And I felt the pain that this system can cause. I felt the pain uh, with my father. I saw him every single day of his life. So the question of whether I'm afraid of losing an election, or whether I'm afraid of Mr. Modi, or whether I'm afraid of these things is, I mean, uh, it's not, it, one second, let me, it's not actually yeah. the point. What I want to do, I'm here basically for one thing. I see tremendous energy in this country. I see more energy in this country than I see in any other country. I see billions of youngsters. And I see that this energy is trapped. And this energy is trapped for a couple of things. And this energy is Rahul, trapped. Can I draw you back to my question? Yeah. I, I, will, I will go into those areas and I respect what you're telling me about your personal journey. It's not, Rahul, as if I lack empathy for what you're saying. Yeah. In fact, I'm sure many people do. But my question to you is, Narendra Modi calls you a Shehzada. Now, let's be very specific, Rahul. Narendra Modi calls you a Shehzada. What is your view of Narendra Modi? A. B. Are you afraid of losing to Narendra Modi? Rahul, please answer my question as yeah. specifically as you can. What Rahul Gandhi wants to do is Rahul Gandhi and millions of youngsters in this country want to change the way the system in this country works. What Rahul Gandhi wants to do is empower the women in this country, wants to unleash the power of these women. I mean, we talk about, we talk about being a superpower. You're avoiding my no, question. No, not avoiding your question. Uh, my question to you is what is the Congress Vice President's view of the BJP's prime ministerial candidate. I think we'll defeat the BJP in the next election. And what is your view of the BJP's prime ministerial candidate? The BJP has a prime ministerial candidate. Uh, the BJP believes in concentration of power uh, in the hands of one person. I fundamentally disagree with that. I believe in 
democracy. I believe in opening up the system. I believe in the RTI. I believe in giving power to our people. We have fundamentally different philosophies. What uh, is your view? Would you like to expand your views? The Prime Minister, the pri your Prime Minister accuses Narendra Modi in his press conference yeah. of oh. presiding over, and I quote, the mass massacre of innocent citizens on the street of Ahmedabad. Yeah. Mr. Rahul Gandhi, my question to you is this. Do you agree with your Prime Minister when he says that? Well, I mean, what, what the Prime Minister is saying is a fact. I mean, uh, Gujarat happened, people died. But the real issue, as far as I'm concerned... How do you accuse the Mr. Narendra Modi of it? No, Gujarat happened, people died. The real issue at hand here... How is Mr. Modi responsible for it? 